The T1 digital carrier system. We have seen analog systems, and now it's time to look at digital carrier system. We would like to go over quick introduction, then we'll see two concepts there. We'll introduce the concept of framing and signaling through the T1 carrier system. Now, this is a block diagram of the carrier system. It starts with 24 channels. This is American standard and we have two dozens of users. It's voice example. So assume there are 24 telephone channels would like to be uh, communicated and it's digital system. This diagram shows the multiplexing process. So 24 different users will be multiplexed into one line. Although it shows like uh, mechanical representation here, it doesn't have to be mechanical. This is being done using electronic circuits. So this switch goes to user number one, then two, number three, four, and then it rotates over all the 24 different users. We have time division multiplexing into one channel. So the first thing is the multiplexing, and it's not mechanical. Now, the 24 different users now are combined into one channel. This is using time division multiplexing and pulse amplitude modulated. So the, the information in every user is represented in the amplitude of the pulse. Using the encoder, the coder, we are going into using quantizer and encoder, and that will give, us, will give you eight binary pulses. This is PCM now. Going every amplitude will be translated into eight different pulse bits. So we have binary code words. Every sample now will be represented in a code word, and it's binary because it's made of zeros and ones. Now, the digital processor will convert the signal into the format and pulse shape represented in a way that is good for the transmission medium. Okay, in the T1 standard, the spacing between every regenerative repeater and another is about uh, two kilometers, a little bit less. And using the American standard, it's going to be 6,000 feet. So every 6,000 feet, we have another repeater to regenerate the pulse or the pulses and, and the code. At the receiver side, we have a digital processor. And then we are doing the decoding to do the opposite of um, to get the signal back into the proper form, which is TDM, time division multiplex at this stage. And now we are doing the demultiplexing. The decoder decode the binary pulses into samples, and then demultiplexing is being occurred here. So then we go from the demultiplexing, every pulse will go into the right channel. Okay, if one is communicating with one, for example, then the pulses will be demultiplexed back to the users. For the details, explanation of demultiplexing. Sampling quantization, we have we have videos for that. We're just now showing the general block diagram. Once more, I advise you to be able to reproduce this figure so that you, you can tell you understand what's going on. And for every process at the transmitter coding, we have to do the opposite. Decoding, multiplexing, we have to do demultiplexing. Uh, a low pass filtering is required at the receiver to convert the samples into continuous uh, signal. So finally, we need the continuous voice to be listened to by the destination. This setup is called the T1 carrier system. Now, more about the T1 system. Uh, this system has a data rate of 1.544 megabit per second. This, is, this level is called the digital signaling level one, because the 24 users together will give us a data rate of 1.544 megabit per second, and we'll see this number in details. There are other levels. When we combine DS1 together, we get DS2 and DS3 and DS4 and so on. If I say digital signaling living one, it means the level of the T1 system when 24 different are, uh, users are combined. There are similar uh, standards, like the T1. And those standards are international by the CCITT or ITU currently. And their data rate will not be the same because they are combining 30 different channels and they are getting the, the aggregate data rate to be 2.48 megabit per second. And that's used in, in Europe and other countries. And we have channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to channel 24 in the case of, uh, of, 
of uh, the T1, but for the case of the the CCITT standard or ITU standard, we'll go up to 30 different channels. We'll see more details about that. Okay, so CCITT we're standing for standing for uh, consultative consultative committee on international telephony and telegraph, and now it's called the ITU International Telecommunication Union. Okay, now every channel, as we said, will have eight pulses, one code word representing one sample. Or well, more about the T1 system will come in the following slides. In this slide, we focus on framing and synchronization. So what's a frame? A frame is defined to be a segment containing one code word corresponding to one sample from each of the 24 different channels or different the channel here refer, refers to user so if this is how the frame look like okay we have eight bits per time slot the first eight bit represent the first uh, user or the first channel eight bit for the second channel and so on so the total number of bits for the different users in the example of the t1 carrier system we have eight times 24 which is 192 so a frame consists of 192 bits plus one additional framing bit, one additional synchronization bit. We'll see why we add one extra bit. But now for the T1 system, we get 193 bits per frame. Okay. And remember that this frame contain one sample only. So I have to get another sample. What's the sampling rate? For human application voice, you know, for voice application, we um, we speak up to four. Our our audible sound is up to four kilohertz approximately. So using Nyquist criteria, we need to sample at twice that, which is 8,000 samples per second. Which means the sample the sampling duration, you know, time and frequency are reciprocals. So this is the sampling rate. This is the sampling interval. One over 8,000 is 125 microsecond. Everything here must be transmitted within one microsecond, 125 microsecond. So we're saying the data rate will be 193 bits per frame. We need to divide by 125 microsecond per frame, so the frame cancel with the frame, and we get 1.544 megabits per second. This is the number that we have shown in the previous slide, the data rate for the T1 system, the DS1 digital signaling level, DS1. So you should be ready to repeat the calculation if I change the number of users or if we change the number of bits per user or channel or if we change the number of sampling bits. So either we change the number of bits per user, the number of users in a frame or even uh, the number of bits added for framing or synchronization. So why are we having this extra bit and what's the meaning of framing bits? Let's read the definition first. Framing bits are chosen so that a sequence of framing bits, one at a time, one at the beginning of each frame, forms a special pattern that's unique, uniquely, uh, or that's unique to be formed, uniquely to be formed in special signals. That's uh, sorry, unlikely to be formed in, in speech signals. Okay, so we're going to have bits here. In the first frame, we'll put one. Second frame, zero third frame zero up till the 12th frame we have 12 frame we call them super frame so in the first frame i will put one here all right and then i'll get the samples from the first user it could be zero one one zero whatever second user third user okay and then in my next frame i'll put zero then zero then zero then one i have all the samples coming here until i go over all the super frame bits one 0, 0, 0, 1, then 1, 0, 0. After 12 frame, I repeat myself. How did we get this sequence? We chose this sequence such that it's it's usually unlikely to be formed by, by guess. We didn't choose all zeros or all ones because they could just occur uh, from the signal. So what's, what's the use of this? Okay, The use of this is when we get the data, when you turn on your system, you will not, of course, you will not know where is the start. So you'll get the first bit. I'll assume that I would say, is this the beginning of a super frame or not? If it turns out to be one, I'll say yes, maybe yes. 
so i will keep it here and i will check the next frame am i am i getting zero next frame next frame if i get all the sequence after 12 frames i would say that this is really the start of the super frame i cannot assume that this happens by random so the next eight bits will be my first user second user and so on what if the first bit is not one i will check the next one this could be the beginning of super frame so i look for my key this is like a password or special key that we look for okay if this is one i look for the second frame and third frame if i get this special sequence at the beginning of 12 frames then i will declare that i know i am synchronized otherwise i will say this is my next my beginning of the frame check for the special code if it doesn't occur i will check check for the next third until i get to the beginning of the frame i will be unlucky if i start in the next bit of the beginning so i will have to check everything in a super frame and then come back synchronize so it's a timely process even with fast processors it takes 0.4 to 0.6 millisecond to detect synchronization loss to find out that i am unsynchronized and sometimes it takes up to 15 milliseconds to reframe this is like the same thing happened in your tv if you turn on your receiver digital receiver you get data but what is the image what is the video what are the colors okay you will search for special pattern and then if you get this pattern you assume that this is like uh, a mark or signal that this is really the start of the frame so yes when we turn on the tv in the beginning it takes a while to synchronize and this could be few milliseconds so again frame bits are chosen so that a sequence of framing bits one at the beginning of each frame form a special pattern that's unlikely to be formed by speech signals okay a logical question would be somebody to say why did we just choose 12 why didn't we choose longer if we choose longer sequence the probability of detecting this by mistake will be less but it will be a delayed process if we choose a smaller um, pattern then yes it will be faster but this pattern could occur by chance from from the data itself so people found out that 12 frame is a good uh, trade-off okay in addition to the framing bits there is another concept we'd like to understand which is the signaling or formatting bits okay what are signaling bits bits corresponding to the uh, uh, dialing pulses and telephone on off hook or other control bits so signaling bits carry control bits for example i would like to say that the system is off hook on off or on hook off hook means that he is busy on hook that the system is uh, not used and this is the hook the you know the old time telephones they look like this so they would they'd say on hook or off hook nowadays maybe in some telephones you see it but not in your mobile phones or advanced mobile phones so the root of hook is that this is the hook all right so how do we send data in our frame there is there is no place for signaling bits so it's either framing bits or data to superimpose the signaling bits they do a small trick in the first frame seventh frame 13 frames in every six frames they would wrap they would steal one bit okay so this bit is what you see here okay so the least significant bit will be robbed will robbed off they will be stolen and they will use they will be used by the by the uh, control exchange and the telephone system okay so would this affect the quality yes because we're going from eight to seven but we are doing this every sixth frame frame number one seven thirteen other frames will be just normal all the eight bits will be used for information but for frame number one and seven thirteen nineteen every six frames we are going to use only seven bit for information and the eighth one will be dropped they will be used for signaling all right so the impact of course is less data rate for information but every sixth frame and of course um, why we're doing this because we need this data signaling rates we don't need a huge signaling rate we just need one every six bit if we do it in all the frames then we lost the quality without the advantage 
if we wait for every 10 or 100 frames then we might be in need for signaling and we don't have enough bits okay so these are ma the mark bits are the framing uh, are the signaling or control uh, bits okay so frame number one frame number seven not in every frame okay. this frames in the top frame one seven and so on the lower frames remain as is. the other frames Uh, somebody would ask a nice question. What is the what is the signaling data rate? Can you find out? Remember that if you know the, the bit rate or if you know the framing rate, it would be one over six times the framing rate. Because in every frame, of course, for all users, you need to multiply by 24. So the 24 times uh, the framing and divide by six. Okay. Now, uh, this is an exercise I'd like to leave for you. And please write your answers down. You can pause the video now. Five telephone, five telephone signals. This is the number of users. With a bandwidth 4.5 megahertz each are to be transmitted by binary PCM. The signaling are sampled 25 above Nyquist using the sampling rate and the original bandwidth. Okay, so it's um, it's um, the Nyquist rate would be of course uh, twice the frequency and then you multiply by 1.25 to get above Nyquist rate. Samples are quantized into 1024 levels. From here you can find the number of bits from the quantizer, the number of bits per sample. So it's um, 10 here in every frame. Framing and synchronization requires an additional 4%. You need to find the total number of bits, that's 5 times 10, and you have 4 extra percent uh, data, that's 4 out of 100 is 2 out of 50. I'm just giving some hint. A PCM encoder is used to convert these signals before they are time multiplexed into the single stream. Find the sampling rate, okay? Find these values, the quantization number of bits in every frame, how many bits, determine and sketch. Uh, sketch the data rate okay so please pause in here and write your answers down it would be great to cross compare our answers okay now before we conclude this is would like to go over some uh, digital multiplexing techniques okay uh, and multiplexing data the question how do we multiplex we would like to to multiplex several low data rate into high data rate. This is the meaning of multiplexing. We just would like to share with you that there are different ways of doing the same thing. For example, here we're multiplexing, just for clarity, four different users into one channel. If we do digit interleaving, it means we take one digit from here, another digit from here, third, so we have A1, B1, C1, and so on. Another way of doing it would be to have word uh, World by world, for example, uh, we take eight bits from the first user. So we have A0, 1, A2, and we collect uh, like four bits, or, or if it's a word byte or bit, uh, we take all of them from one user, and then from the second, and then from third, and then from the fourth. So here a digit at a time, and here's a word at a time. Uh, now, what if, in the right hand side, we see the scenario, what if one of the users ha requires higher data rate than the other? One option to do it, for example, let's say that A has more data rate than uh, users B and C. So you can see there is one connection here, another, a third, another connection here, a third connection here. So A has three times the data rate of the others, or all of them combined is are equivalent to A. So one way to do it is to take A then we go to B, then A, then C, then A. Every time we take one sample, we go back to A. Or alternatively, you can combine all the three together here. We are multiplexing them. Okay. And then we get the user A, which has a higher data rate, to be compared with the combination of all of them. So we combine all of them together. Now, uh, now all of them are combined to get one multiplex, multiplex channel which is the different high data rate. So you can see here the highlighted connection. Synchronous channels and bit stuffing. 
Okay, asynchronous channels and bit stuffing. Now, sometimes we would think of bits being a sequence in a very simple way that they are organized and they're spaced and they don't overlap. Let's look at the issue of bit stuffing. Let's say that it's an example of a cable. This cable extends for 1000 kilometer, coaxial cable carrying, of course, it's a long distance, just to illustrate the idea. 1000 kilometer coaxial cable carrying two times 10 raised to the power of eight pulses per second. So the data rate is 200 megabits per second or pulses per second. Assuming a normal propagation speed of two times 10 raised to the power of eight meters per second. You know that uh, signal propagates the speed of light when, when they are in air. But let's assume that inside the cable for a given dielectric, and the, the speed is two times 10 raised to the power eight. This is again, these numbers are just to illustrate the idea. Usually you have three times 10 raised to the power eight in free space, but in cables we have, we're assuming we have two times 10 raised to the power eight. Speed will be lower. So it will take this uh, data to travel on the cable. Uh, we have the distance, 8,000 kilometer, divide by the speed. So we have one over 200 of a second, one divided by 200 fraction of a, uh, the fraction of a second of transient. The time it takes for the pulse or the bit to travel from the beginning of the cable to the end. Okay, if this is the cable, a bit to travel from here to here on a pulse, it will take this much of propagation time, one over 200. All right. So if you take this number, 2 times 10 to the power 8, and this is the data rate, and multiply by the time it takes, you will find that there will, there will be 1 million pulses in transient or transient. For the pulse here, it takes, by the time we, we get to here, we have produced another 1 million because the data rate is 2 times 10 to the power 8, multiplied by this time duration of travel time, you get 1 million pulses have been produced. So in the cable, you can think of one at the end, and there are a million pulses exactly between the beginning and the end. Now, let's assume that there is a change on the cable temperature by one Fahrenheit. You know that changing the, the, uh, the temperature changes the propagation characteristic of the cable. And that, let's say that that has an impact of 0.01% on the velocity. So the transient pulses will arrive at different times. So the speed of propagation will be different at different. So it's not, if you think of cars being behind each other, then don't think that they have equal spacing. This change on temperature will change, will cause asynchronous behavior. And there will be some empty spots and some crowded spots because of the change of temperature. So what you do to, to solve this problem, usually you put dummy digits. This is called pulse stuffing and also known as elastic store. Okay, And this is why sometimes we need to store the data to organize things. Uh, we need buffer to rearrange things in the proper time. So bit stuffing, just like pizza stuffing, where you put uh, stuff the pizza with, with cheese, we are stuffing some additional pulses in the middle to account for this change on temperature and variation of speed. Well, the reason we present this is to show you that things could be not as simple as we are putting them. So we're showing one complexity related to asynchronous channel due to temperature change. And the solution to this is bit stuffing, where we add some bits, dummy bits, for um, to account for the variation in speed. Uh, another source of asynchronousness is the imperfect clocking. Our clock, our timing at the receiver and the transmitter will not be exact. So things could shift to the right or to the left a little bit. We cannot use the channel at the maximum, maximum theoretical limit. Okay. And just like temperature could, could increase, it also could decrease. So if you want to read more about this, you can look at positive and negative uh, pulse stuffing. And you are advised to check this out in any of the resources on in the internet. If you want, you can write your answer down. Positive versus negative pulse stuffing. Okay, now uh, last thing to, to share with you that 
again in real systems we talked about the digital signaling level number one where we have 24 different users getting come back together okay we can also have different levels so here 24 users we, we, we explain the t1 system that give you 1.544 megabits per second now uh, in big system digital system you need to combine four of them to get another level which is 6.318 and then you combine seven you get four 44 meg you combine three you get 1.39 you can see these numbers in the american standard sometimes is not straightforward we have 24 uh, four seven and sometimes we just go ahead so one users with 1.44 can be connected directly to this and this is why we have standard data rates if you want to buy a certain rate you will not be given what you want exactly either you go from 1.44 to multiples of that or six megabits per second Okay, other possible connections are there we, where we connect uh, only two. So it depends on what the standard and the industry has got. Uh, what you see on the right hand side is the European standard. The European standard, uh, the numbers look, um, uh, look maybe more straightforward. We have 30, 4, 4, 4. You combine them, you change the rate. And the maximum rate, you, see, you can see that we have done things in a way that makes the two systems at the end compatible. We have 139.264 megabits per second. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Now, please follow up with the coming videos. And if you have any comment or question, please share your comments and questions and any idea to improve uh, the videos, uh, most welcome.